every day after a spinal cord injury is difficult. But this injury is more a disruption of communication than it is a complete devastation of function. We really thought our brain just tells our muscles what to do, right? Our spinal cord is just a conduit of information. What we've shown is that's not the case. If we could put a stimulator in there, we can reverse the injuries that we have to the spinal cord and get closer and closer to what you might end up calling a cure. Are these the numbers? 215815? Yes. Oh, On the thing you sent me was three. So I was two just to three, right? Two, yeah, okay, that's fine. It's general practice right now where if you're completely paralyzed, you don't really get much rehab because there's no sense in doing it. We found that our assumption is not accurate. I started in this area 25 years ago and we know in all other species that there is a set of networks in the spinal cord that control locomotion. It's not the brain, it's the spinal cord. So the research question was, do humans have the sophistication of these networks in the spinal cord? We did very meticulous, tedious experiments, and you could see locomotor patterns in the spinal cord. We said, okay, if we could activate people with complete spinal cord injuries and see those patterns, possibly we could get them to take independent steps again. Point three. Okay, work on that left leg. Toe up, toe up, toe up. There you go, a little bit more. So he's actually receiving stimulation through his epidural implant. The stimulation is raising the excitability of the spinal cord, and what the trainers are doing is providing sensory cues that also the spinal cord is able to interpret. So all that information is integrated and eventually the spinal cord starts relearning and remembering all those things that it was able to do prior to the injury. This is the stimulator that we use. This flat portion is what we call the paddle electrode. That's the portion that goes right on top of the spinal cord to activate the nerves. We make our incision from the lower thoracic to the upper lumbar area. Generally spans about two vertebrae. Then we connect it to the battery. The, currently the battery is Bluetooth activated so you can control the voltage, the intensity of stimulation. The battery then sends electrical impulses to the electrode, which is sitting right on top of the spinal cord. Is that on two minutes or one minute? Uh, two minutes. All right, let's put it, go ahead and put it on one minute. Two on one. We train people with motor complete injuries, which means you couldn't detect any signals from the brain. And one of them was Jeff. I got the implant about four and a half years ago. I've really tried hard to not come in with too many expectations, because when you first get injured and they, they kind of assess how injured you are, and they pretty much say, don't expect to get anything else from this. It's a permanent injury. Jeff had a very high spinal cord injury. So he has not only impairment, of his legs, but his trunk and his arms and his hands. So what happened with the stimulator is he learned to walk over ground with only balance assist. We were pretty surprised by that. He also has more strength in his trunk and his arms and in his hands. So that also shows us that the whole circuitry is being activated to contribute to this task of walking. Are we gonna be able to do this? Yeah. just got easier over time. The nervousness is gone. That level of confidence, just being able to do something as simple as stand up on my own is a big motivator to, to find out what else I can Start do. Start by heading to your left and we could turn around right there. My left. Yep. The impact is tremendous. I mean, this is a game changer. It's not just locomotion that you can activate, but you can also reactivate bladder, bowel, and blood pressure regulation. Once this is gotten into the clinics and it's used, it's gonna be a significant impact in the health and quality of life of uh, spinal cord injury patients. It's important to understand that at this point, it is really a research study, but people with motor complete injuries could be functionally better anywhere from 40 to 90% soon. Like soon, they can do that. So I think we really need to rethink how we're providing care for people after spinal cord injury. We haven't found anyone who actually has what has been thought of as a complete injury or completely paralyzed. They can still recover.
Thanks for watching this episode of Superhuman. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel for more Superhuman episodes. And don't forget to visit freethink.com for more stories of people moving the world.